another classic Unix system has died. HPUX officially, officially has ended support and has hit obsolescence as of the stroke of midnight on New Year's Eve. So as of January 1st, it is boom, gone, out the door, no longer supported. Uh, now specifically, specifically what we're talking about here is version 11 IV3 of HPUX. That was the last holdout. That was the last version of HPUX that was still supported by Hewlett Packard or HP. Um, and and not, it wasn't just 11 IV3, it was 11 IV3 v3 for itanium servers <laughs> for the itanium powered servers that specific version that was still supported uh, most other versions of hpux had hit end of life several years back um, uh, uh, we were talking you know in 2003 uh, 2009 2010 etc various versions of hpux had had hit obsolescence or end of life in one form or another but now that's it it's it. That's the last version. It's dead. HP will no longer be supporting it or updating it, providing patches for it. Nothing. It's gone. At, at 2026, it's just dead. It's just dead. HPUX is gone, which means HPUX is joining the likes of, of IRIX and so many other different classic Unix systems that are just gone, just no longer supportive, just, just thrown by the wayside. IRIX support from, from SGI ended in uh, 2013. Gone, gone. I mean, that, that was 13 years ago or almost 13 years ago. Crazy, absolutely crazy that it's been that long since, since IRIX was officially dust binned. There, there's still a few Unix systems out there kicking um, to some degree or another. I mean, it's it's a bit of a stretch. Even when modern modern Unix systems are being supported, like you know from Oracle and a few others, um, it's it's barely supported. Um, and so, seeing the classic Unix systems die off one at a time is kind of a sad thing. Um, this is this is a screenshot for those of you looking at the video version of uh, the final version of of HPUX uh, HPUX 11i v3 for the itanium server there, there it is right there running that beautiful common desktop environment the CDE I, I know I know it's old and I know the color scheme is kind of vomit inducing but I love it. I love it. I mean, I mean, yeah, no, if I were to pick colors for <laughs> a default color theme for a system, would this weird cyan orange combination be what I choose? No, God, no. But I love it. I love it just the same. In fact, uh, I, I run CDE sometimes on on my main laptop because I like it so much. I, I miss it. It's fast. It's clean. It's easy to use, especially once you kind of get it, the way it works all figured out. It's just a nice system. Um, here's a screenshot from the uh, support documents. Uh, there's been kind of a staggered obsolescence. Uh, in fact, the... Uh, uh, some of the HPUX stuff uh, officially ended back at the end of October and then finally at the end of December as well, uh, specifically for the integrity servers um, and uh, that's those, those itanium based servers. I, I, I wanted to talk about this because it makes me sad. Like it's, it makes me feel wistful for the past. I, my first job out of high school, all right, right? So before I even graduated from high school, I got a job at Hewlett Packard. Uh, in fact, I got this job at, at, at Hewlett Packard at HP, um, out just outside of Seattle, Washington, one of their, uh, their support campuses. And uh, I was, you know, I was 18 and I was gonna be graduating in a couple of weeks. And uh, I got the job and the job was to support HPUX servers, uh, HPUX workstations, and old Unix workstations like Apollo workstations. They had this uh, this system called Domain, uh, which was this Unix-like system. And anyway, uh, these old Unix workstations, some of which were no longer developed, but HP purchased all of them and purchased the assets so they could continue support contracts for them. And so I got the job to, my job was to maintain these aging Unix workstations and keep them running for these high paying customers like Boeing and these, these big financial institutions that were running them. 
And it was just, it's just a super, the job of a lifetime for a high school nerd, right? I'm like, I get to work with, with literally like, you know, like $30,000 Unix workstations and keep them up and running. So cool. And, uh, uh, I, I remember my, uh, my job started before graduation day, right? So like, uh, my job officially started before graduation day. And, uh, so I couldn't make the graduation rehearsal thing where I practice walking to my seat and across the stage to get my diploma and all that. And the high school principal was furious about this. Um, he wanted to make it so, oh, well, then I don't graduate. If I don't come to the graduation rehearsal, I can't be at the graduation ceremony. I don't, I don't get my diploma. <laughs> and, uh, oh, man, uh, I, had, I had like this army of teachers that came to my defense because they're like, dude, the kid got a decent job and you're going to punish him for that. Like he gets to go work at Hewlett Packard. He's this nerdy kid. Like let him, let him work at, let him get his friggin' diploma. So anyway, I did graduate. Um, but uh, so I was a high school kid. And I was working in an office that was uh, just the most Dilbert themed office possible. It was cubicle farms and everything else. But I was on the road all the time. And my job was literally, we'd get a call from Boeing or whoever. And they'd be like, okay, these giant HP UX and Apollo Unix workstations. We don't know why. They just won't turn on and they make some sort of crazy noise. And they have no idea what's wrong with it. So I got to go back into our big storage warehouse of, of parts. It was like a graveyard of twenty to eighty thousand dollar Unix server and workstations, just just filling this massive warehouse. And I look around and I find parts and compatible parts, trying to just load up my car with everything I think I might need. And then I, I go to go to Boeing or wherever and go into their giant hangars and whatnot. And they'd wheel me in and they'd have security watching over me to make sure I didn't didn't leave this one little area or dive too deeply into their corporate secrets or whatnot. And I'd have to get all these machines up and running. And man, I tell you, for uh, a kid who was into even at that age, retro computing and 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 big awesome computers, it was a dream come true. I got to, I, I got to go in and you know everything from swapping out dying hard drives to cleaning out aircraft maintenance gunk. Which I tell you what, man, cleaning out. If you're ever in a Boeing hangar where they're building airplanes and they've got like a big computer workstation the gunk that those machines fill up with is obscene. It's not just oil and it's not just human whatever. It's like metal shavings and like dust and lint and, and it congeals into just the worst substance known to man. And it clogs up the power supplies and it clogs up the drives. It literally, I went in more than once and their floppy drives were filled with this stuff. And they're like, can you clean that out for us? And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if I can, man. That's disgusting. <laughs> this is going to take me a while. So I'd spend, but you know, Boeing was a big, big customer. And so they were paying through the teeth to have me there. I don't know how much Hewlett Packard was making for every hour I was on site, but it would guarantee you it was a lot more than I was earning. Anyway, so I, I got I got to spend a lot of time at HP and I, I got my own HP UX workstation for when I was back in my little cubicle farm and it looked basically like this, only not widescreen. I had a I had this uh this little dinky like 14 inch CRT display that was just just fuzzy and out of sync and needed like like a full cap kit on it. Like it just looked horrible, but whatever. It was <laughs> You know, I was the high school kid. They gave me the garbage computer. Um, and But I had a nice HP UX box, and I just, I loved it. So I've always had this soft spot in my heart for HP UX and the common desktop environment ever since those days uh, back in the 1990s. And uh, uh, I, I miss it. I, I, I truly, truly do. Um, uh, you know, I even after I left Hewlett Packard, we got a, an HP UX workstation. Uh, we bought one, you know, very used, and it wasn't a top of the line one, but we bought one to have it at home. Just I, I love those machines so much. Uh, I, uh, it was great. And to see that they're officially dead now, uh, that all of the HP UX line is, is done. It's completely done. It's no longer supported. It is officially hit obsolescence. It's a sad thing. 
it's sort of like looking at the IRIX workstations from Silicon Graphics, the, the SGI IRIX workstations. Those were, man, those were amazing. Those were amazing computers. And to see them no longer supportive is, is a sad thing. And I know, I know the future marches ever onward and people are building new technology. And I know that the computers that we have nowadays, including what I'm recording this show on, is so many times more powerful than that little crusty HP UX box that I was I was using back in the 90s at my first little job as a uh, as an HP UX hardware and software support guy. Uh, I, I know that, but uh, I still miss it. I still miss it. And it's still sad to see. Um, I, I, I tell you what, man, uh, it, it, I guarantee you later today or tomorrow, sometime, sometime this week, for sure, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to make all my systems running CDE. I'm just going to pretend like they're all HP UX because I can and because we have that ability because CDE is open source nowadays. Uh, anyway, so there you go. Uh, it, it, another Unix bites the dust. It's a, it's a sad thing, uh, but uh, it is the way of the world. Uh, thank you for the Lunduke Journal subscribers for allowing me to take this trip down memory lane as we, as we mourn the passing of HPUX. Uh, go to lunduke.com where you can watch any, anything from the Lunduke Journal for free on darn near any platform on the planet. It's all up there. Uh, and if you want to be a supporter of the Lunduke Journal and grab a monthly, yearly, or lifetime subscription, that's all up at lunduke.com too. And lifetime subscribers, of course, go up on the lifetime subscriber wall. That's that one right there, uh, which has part two and part three to it because it's fill it up. Uh, so if you want to get on that wall on your lifetime subscriber, go ahead and toss me an email and let me know you'd like to be added to the wall. And I would gladly toss you in. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, HPUX gone. With that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare end broadcast.